Julia Roberts is a world-famous actress, a star of Hollywood romantic comedies and dramas. During her acting career, she had repeatedly won prestigious awards, and her fees are incredibly huge. How the owner of Hollywood's most disarming smile achieves success and how she lives now. Julia Roberts, How Pretty Woman Lives and Where She Is Now. The future icon of romantic comedies was born on October 28, 1967, in Smyrna, Georgia. Julia Flona was the third child in the family. She had an older brother, Eric Roberts, and a sister, Lisa. They also chose acting as a profession. All the children of the Roberts family were drawn to the big screen for a reason. Their parents were also people of art. The father of the family, Walter Grady Roberts, was simultaneously a seller of water mattresses, an actor, and a writer. Julia's mother, Betty Lou, was a Paris secretary and part-time actress. Together they ran an acting school and were in a difficult financial situation by the time they had baby Julia. Coincidentally, the children of Martin Luther King attended their school, and it was he who paid the hospital bill for Julia's mother in the maternity hospital as a sign of gratitude for the attention to his children. In 1971, when Julia was four years old, Betty Lou filed for divorce, and the following year she moved into a new house and married theater critic Michael Motes, with whom they had a daughter, Nancy. In 1983, this marriage also broke up. Betty called her second marriage a big mistake, since her husband did not like her children from the first marriage and even used physical violence against them. As an adult, Julia has never made her memories of a difficult childhood public out of respect for her mother and stepsister. But the actress's brother, Eric, would later state that their stepfather was a monster and turned their life into a nightmare. After the mother's second divorce, the children had to go to work to make money for a living. From the age of 13, Julia worked as a waitress at a pizza place while studying at Griffin High School in Campbell College. The future celebrity was fond of playing the clarinet, took part in local beauty contests, but never won. Classmates considered her ugly and bullied her for her tall height, big mouth, and thinness. The actress is very critical of her appearance, despite the fact that she is constantly presented in various ratings of the most beautiful women in the world. Robert said she has grasshopper legs, horse teeth, and straw for hair. With all this, she is opposed to plastic surgery and doesn't like makeup and flashy clothes. Her brother Eric played a big role in her acting career, whose success deeply impressed young Julia, and she began to participate in amateur productions. But initially her dream was to become a veterinarian, as she loved animals very much. After graduating from high school, Julia entered Georgia State University and then moved to New York with her sister to try her hand at film acting. There she signed a contract with a modeling agency and began attending acting courses. In addition, the young actress began to train her pronunciation, since her southern accent was inappropriate on the screen. Soon the girl abandoned acting courses because she didn't see any results from them and began to visit auditions. By the way, when she joined the Actors Guild of the USA, she had to change her birth name from Julie to Julia, since another actress named Julie Roberts was already registered there. The next step on the way to success was a trip to Hollywood to move in with her brother, who had already achieved success in the movies. It turned out that the American film industry didn't need another provincial actress with a specific smile, which became the first serious disappointment for the young actress. In 1987, she managed to get only a small role in the TV series, Crime Story, and the movie Firehouse. At first, her brother helped her a lot, and even invited Julia for a small role of his character's sister in the action movie Blood Red, which was released three years after filming. But soon he got tired of babysitting his sister and declared that it was time for her to take care of herself. Who knows, maybe if she hadn't gotten that kick in the rear, she wouldn't have been so successful. But young Julia then considered this an act of betrayal and even stopped communicating with her brother. Later, she took revenge on him by helping his ex-wife with the divorce lawsuit. Tabloids still write that their relationship hasn't recovered. After losing her main assistant and conquering the big screen, Julia continued to improve her acting skills by entering a dance studio and learning how to play various instruments. Without the help of her brother, the actress starred in the TV show Miami Vice. In the movie Satisfaction, Julia portrayed a girl playing in a rock band, and for this role, she learned how to play drums and bass. On the set of the project, Julia met Liam Neeson, with whom she started dating. Roberts was 19 at the time and Liam was 35. This union didn't last long. The couple broke up soon after moving in together since Julia declared that she wasn't ready for family life and immediately moved out. Also in 1988, the actress was invited for a role in the comedy Mystic Pizza, 
for which she had to dye her brown hair black. For this picture, the actress, who is gaining popularity, received $50,000, and the next role of Julia Roberts in the 1989 Steel Magnolias made both critics and viewers talk about her as one of the most promising actresses in America. My reception, my reception, ferns, dancing, tons of people, every pink flower west of the Mississippi, wedding cake in the dining room and the groom's cake. In this film, Julia played a minor but memorable role of a diabetic girl preparing for a wedding. The film became a blockbuster, collecting $80 million in America. Robert received $90,000 for her performance, a Golden Globe Award, and an Oscar nomination in the Best Supporting Actress category. By the way, Julia met a new boyfriend on the set, Dylan McDermott, who proposed to the girl, but the wedding never took place. In 1990, Julia took part in the movie Flatliners, which brought the actress $500,000 and a new lover, Kiefer Sutherland, with whom she even got engaged. The actor was the reason for Julia's breakup with her previous boyfriend. They were supposed to have the wedding of the year, but meanwhile tabloids caught Julia with a close friend of Kiefer, Jason Patrick. However, this wedding was not destined to happen since the girl broke off the engagement three days before the ceremony, running away with the groom's friend to Ireland, for which she was given the nickname Runaway Bride, which she will confirm more than once abruptly ending relationships. Also in 1990, Julia Roberts starred in many girls' favorite movie, Pretty Woman. Oh, honey. You know what's happened? I've got a runner in my pantyhose. I'm not wearing pantyhose. It's one of the most famous romantic comedies, which has become a classic. The original title of the film was $3,000 because it was the amount agreed upon by the main characters and Vivian, played by Julia, was supposed to be a drug addict and die of an overdose at the end of the film, according to one screenplay, or go to Disneyland with a friend in an alternative ending. But the director remade all the dark scenes and added a happy ending. During the preparation for filming, Julia spent a lot of time with director Gary Marshall's wife, who ran a free clinic on Hollywood Boulevard in order to learn how to behave like Vivian. It's interesting that during the filming of an intimate scene with Richard Gere, the young actress was so nervous that a vein popped out on her forehead. It was visible on camera, so the director and Gere had to massage the actress's forehead. In the scene where Vivian watches old comedies, they had to tickle Julia's heels to achieve genuine laughter from the actress. Julia's dog was present at the shooting. It didn't appreciate the romantic scene between Julia and Richard and started barking. So the scene had to be reshot several times. The actors also had a very busy schedule and Roberts didn't have time to eat. Eventually she became ill and fainted. Then Marshall helped her again, feeding the actress tuna. Another fun fact, on the Pretty Woman poster, there's only Julia's head and the body belongs to her understudy. Apparently Roberts had no time for shooting posters. Pretty Woman was a huge success all over the world and although critics reacted somewhat cool to the picture, it earned about $180 million only in the United States, bringing Roberts a second Oscar nomination as Best Actress and a second Golden Globe. The actress's earnings for the movie amounted to $300,000. Roberts' success made her a real movie star and allowed her to increase the levels of her fees. In 1991, the thriller Sleeping with the Enemy was released, for which she was paid a million dollars which made 23-year-old Julia the youngest actress to receive a seven-figure fee. Listen, there's only one more thing I'm going to ask, only one thing I want to know. Do you have a name? In the same year the film Dying Young, starring long-haired Julia, was released, where her fee was $3 million, as well as the fairy tale of Peter Pan Hook, for which the actress was paid $7 million. Meanwhile, she had a fleeting affair with James Foley. In the following years, the actress starred in the movie The Player and the thriller The Pelican Brief that brought Roberts $8 million. You mean you skipped class and ignored me for a week and now you're throwing it away? Let me see it. Don't laugh. It was ludicrous of me to think that I could solve it. The image of Darby Shaw was written specifically for Julia Roberts. She immediately agreed to the role after reading the book. Also in 1993, Julia herself proposed to country singer Lyle Lovett after dating him for only a few weeks. There was a wedding, but the couple lived together only for two years and then peacefully divorced on their own initiative. 
The actress's next project was a 1994 action movie with elements of drama and comedy, I Love Trouble. Fun fact, the main character jokes about Julia's character, Sabrina, saying that he liked the article where she portrayed a prostitute, which was a reference to Pretty Woman. In the next few years, Julia starred in the films Pret a Porte, Something to Talk About, Everyone Says I Love You, Michael Collins, and Mary Riley, which brought the actress $8.5 million. In 1996, Julia took part in the famous and highly rated TV show Friends, on the set of which she began an affair with Matthew Perry, but the actor was using drugs, so they quickly broke up, since it was unacceptable for Julia. Excuse me. Nah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, is your name Chandler? Uh, yes, yes it is. Chandler Vane. Do you know me, or are you just really good at this game? I'm Susie Moss. Soon Julia found love again. It was the actor Daniel Day-Lewis, with whom she was going to star in Shakespeare in Love. They met several times in London, but when the actor refused the role, their relationship ended. In those years, the lovable actress had relationships with Ethan Hawke and her personal coach, Pat Minocchia, which also ended quickly. In 1997, two films were released at once, which significantly made Julia Roberts richer. It was Conspiracy Theory, with a fee of $11 million, and the drama My Best Friend's Wedding, which brought the actress $12 million. Julia personally selected the actors for this movie, choosing Cameron Diaz and Dermot Mulroney. Right off, I have this monstrous favor to ask you. Excuse me? My best friend Angelique shattered her pelvis line dancing in Aveline over spring break. Be my maid of honor? What? This period was extremely successful for Roberts, whose movies certainly became box office hits, and everyone wanted her for the main role. Soon the actress found a new admirer, Benjamin Bratt. As Julie admitted, she fell in love with the swarthy handsome man at first sight when she saw him on the street. The couple was together for four years, and the guy was given the nickname Mr. Roberts by the media. In 1998, the actress appeared in the TV series Murphy Brown and the movie Stepmom, and a year later in an episode of Law and Order. In general, 1999 was rich in both fees and movies. The actress, along with Hugh Grant, starred in the drama Notting Hill, where she demonstrated her talent for improvisation. The scene in which Anna, Julia's character, chastises a noisy company of men in a restaurant wasn't from the script. An interesting coincidence, the fee for her character's last picture is equal to the amount paid to Julia for shooting in the film, $15 million. Turn over four TRSs and tell them we need radar feedback before the KFTs return at 1900. Then inform the Pentagon we'll need black star cover from 1000 through 1215. And if you say one word about how many mistakes I made in that speech, I'll pelt you with olives. For this work, Julia was nominated for a Golden Globe. Meanwhile, another film was released in which the actress allegedly played herself. It was Runaway Bride. I don't know. I, I, I frankly, I don't even want to talk about it. Me neither. <laughs> On the set, Julia worked with director Gary Marshall again. Roberts used to entertain his grandchildren with a platypus face, which he liked so much that he used it in the frame of the film. By the way, Julia agreed to the shooting on the condition that it would be a single film without a sequel since she didn't want to star in sequels. In 2000, Erin Brockovich was released, which became a real triumph for Julia. I'm doing this for us. I know it's hard for you to understand, but... Don't you want mommy to be good at her job? Hmm? It not only became a box office hit, but also brought the actress an Oscar, a BAFTA award, and a third Golden Globe, as well as an Actors Guild Award. The fee amounted to an unprecedented amount at that time, $20 million, making Roberts the first actress to cross this milestone. By the way, Julia is left-handed, but her character is not, so the actress had some difficulties on the set, for example, with signing papers. The actress appeared at the Oscar ceremony wearing one of the most expensive dresses to have ever been worn at this event, which cost her almost $100 million. The following year on the set of The Mexican, Julia met her current husband, Daniel Motor, a cinematographer who was married at that moment. Julia was paid $5 million for the movie. Next, Ocean's Eleven came out with a payout of $10 million. You're 30 seconds late. I was about to send out sir. Oh, it is. What are you doing here? And America's Sweethearts, 
in which Julia refused the main role in favor of a minor role, but it did not prevent her from earning $15 million. In 2002, Motor and Roberts got married, which came as a surprise to everyone. It was even rumored that Roberts paid an impressive sum to Daniel's ex-wife so that she would agree to speed up the divorce. Very little is known about the wedding ceremony. Julia was wearing a pink cotton dress and Moda was wearing a shirt with a frill collar. Later, the actress admitted that she and Danny made matching tattoos with each other's initials shortly before the wedding, but the letters are located where no one will see them. Later, the couple settled in a luxurious mansion in Malibu with a tennis court for $9.5 million. In that year, Julia starred in the film's Full Frontal, Grand Championship, and George Clooney's directorial debut, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, in which the actress agreed to act for friendship's sake for a symbolic $250,000. The next film, released in 2003, brought the actress as much as $25 million. It was the drama Mona Lisa Smile. Joe. Hello. How are you? Great, thank you so much for this. You're a pal. It's a pleasure. Your timing is perfect. This was followed by the sequel, Ocean's 12, which made Roberts richer by $5 million. Is call Marcus and have him get a hold of Louise so okay. we can make arrangements to send someone down there to get it. He's home now, right? Oh. Marcus. I need to, you know, I need to talk to Marcus. By the way, during the filming, the actress was pregnant with twins. Next came the movie Closer with a payout of $20 million. In the same year, Julia gave birth to a boy, Phineas Walter, and a girl, Hazel Patricia. The actress was warned by doctors that due to poor blood clotting, there was a high risk of death during childbirth, which came prematurely, but fortunately it turned out fine. In 2006, Roberts made a deal with the famous designer, Gianfranco Ferre, and starred in his advertisement for a new collection of sunglasses. For it, the actress was paid $5 million. After a short break in 2006, Julia voiced the cartoon Charlotte's Web and Aunt Bully. This was followed by the movies Charlie Wilson's War, for which the actress was nominated for a Golden Globe, and Fireflies in the Garden, which was directed by Julia's husband, Daniel. In this film, Julia played the mother of Ryan Reynolds' character, although in real life she is only nine years older than her on-screen son. But the on-screen pregnancy was real, and soon the family had a younger son, Henry. But the actress didn't rest for long, and already in 2009 she was in business, starring in the film Duplicity for $15 million, and a year later in Valentine's Day, which brought another $3 million. In the same year, another bestseller was released, the biographical drama Eat, Pray, Love, I just spent some time in Rome, and I came here feeling so great. Now, here I am at the source, and I feel more disconnected than ever. Roberts bought the rights to the film adaptation of the novel of the same name herself and played the main role there. By the way, after filming, in an interview, the actress admitted that she is a Hindu like her husband and they periodically visit Hindu temples with the whole family. In the same year, an advertising video of the Lavazza coffee brand was released with Julia. For the role without words in the 45-second video, the actress was paid $1.35 million. At the same time, Roberts was announced as the face of the Lancome brand. The actress was offered a unique contract for the company, five years of cooperation and $50 million. The following year, the actress voiced the romantic comedy Love, Wedding, Marriage and starred in the film with Tom Hanks' Larry Crown. And in 2012, she played the evil queen in the family fantasy movie Mirror, Mirror. Bread is meat. Less is more. Blah, blah, blah. Commoners love a good metaphor. Just go sell it. Bread is meat. At first, Roberts, as said in an interview, was a thousand percent against this film and considered starring in it a terrible idea. But after meeting with the director, she changed her mind. The actress said that her costumes were very heavy and made it difficult for her to move, and she even pulled the muscle by turning too quickly, and filming had to be suspended. Moreover, the actress's children were hiding under voluminous ball gowns, but still between takes, Julia decided to take them away so that they would not hear her character's speech and would not be afraid. The children, although interested, didn't watch that film so that they would not find the character of their mother unpleasant. 
By the way, the transformation of Roberts into an old witch with a poisoned apple was kept a secret until the release of the film. At this time, a tragedy happened in the actress's family. Julia's half-sister Nancy died. The cause of death was an overdose on medications, and a suicide note was found next to the body, in which Nancy told all about her relationship with her half-sister on three pages and accused Julia of driving her to suicide. She blamed the beautiful sister for the fact that she had caused mental trauma by making fun of her for her obesity. In 2013, Julia joined the Gucci charity program in which she paid special attention to the problem of harmful smoke that is breathed during cooking. The actress plans to replace bad stoves with working ones in poor areas of Africa. A year later, Roberts became the face of Givenchy, presenting herself in a new unusual image, strong and determined, without styling and almost without makeup. By the way, the actress prefers to lie down when makeup is applied to her, as she believes that in this way the results look more natural. In the next few years, the actress starred in the films August the Sage County, The Normal Heart, Art, Secret in Their Eyes, Money Monster, and Mother's Day. The latter brought Julia $3 million, and the family drama Wonder brought her a fee of $6 million. Okay. Open your eyes. No! You, you finished your thesis? Let's get drunk. Yes! In 2018, the actress took part in the TV series Homecoming, for which she received another $600,000, and in the drama Ben is Back. In 2019, Roberts became the face of the Italian brand Calzadonia, and in 2020, Chappard released a promotional video of Happy Sport Watches starring Julia, in which she is carelessly dancing and enjoying life. A few releases are expected in the following years. The drama series Gaslit, about the Watergate scandal, the romantic comedy Ticket to Paradise, and the drama The Friday Night Knitting Club, based on the book of the same name by Kate Jacobs. By the way, Julie is the most famous knitter in Hollywood. She comes up with complex schemes and can knit anything from a scarf to a coat or a bag. At home, she has a whole workshop for different types of needlework, and she carries yarn with her to set so as not to sit around in her free time. Interestingly enough, all the years that Julie has been married to Danny, their marriage has been predicted to end soon. For example, in 2018, the actress was not seen in the company of her husband for almost nine months, but the paparazzi still managed to catch the couple while walking on the beach. And after that, the actress herself shared cute family photos with followers. And last year, the couple celebrated their 19th anniversary of their wedding. On this occasion, the actress shared a photo which showed that over the years, the feelings have not weakened. Recently, the 50-year-old actress has been acting less and even said that due to her life experience, she will no longer act in romantic films. She spends a lot of time with her loved ones on a ranch in New Mexico with a house with an area of 8,000 square feet. Julia has a small farm where she raises chickens and she has only organic vegetables and fruits on her table since the star also manages the vegetable garden herself and even knows how to drive a tractor. The celebrity emphasizes that her family comes first and she tries to protect her children from journalists as much as possible. This year the twins turned 17 and only in honor of this, happy parents shared rare pictures of the children. Nowadays, Julia Roberts' fortune is $250 million, and she earns from $20 to $30 million a year from films and advertising. The actress is rumored to have insured her famous smile for as much as $30 million. The actress prefers to invest money in real estate. At various times, she purchased several houses in Hawaii. She sold one of them with a 50% discount for $16.2 million, the other one, with a view of the Pacific Ocean, sold for $17 million. Another Snow White penthouse, which Roberts decided to say goodbye to, is located in Manhattan, with an area of 6,500 square feet and a view of New York. This sold for $4.5 million. Julie also has a house in Malibu, which she rents out for $10.5,000 a month. Inside, the walls and ceilings of wood are painted white, which along with the large windows creates a sense of space, and the actress sold another house in a cozy ranch style for $8 million. In 2020, the actress purchased a five-story house in San Francisco, built in 1907 and renovated. The mansion has five bedrooms, four bathrooms, an office, a modern kitchen, a dining room, and several places to relax. And a few years ago, Julia bought a house with a skate park for her children, next door to their main mansion in Malibu. The celebrity owns a Mercedes GL320 CDI 
and a Toyota Prius, and last year an announcement appeared in Kazakhstan about the sale of a 33-year-old Rolls Royce that used to belong to the actress. The fact of owning a car by Julia Roberts increased the price of the car to as much as $7 million, although it cost no more than two. Now Julia's popularity, as well as the amount of fees, is not waning. She is still in demand, although she does not try to act too often. Do you like the pretty woman, Julia Roberts? How Michael Douglas Lives and How Much He Earns Michael Kirk Douglas was born on September 25, 1944, in the young acting family of Kirk Douglas and Diana Dill. The boy was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, but soon the family moved to New York. Two and a half years later, Michael had a younger brother, Joel. The family lived in a one-room apartment in the Greenwich Village area. Right now, our hero is called the heir to the show business's royal dynasty, but back then, his parents were just starting their careers. Kirk spent most of his time in California, filming under a studio contract, and his marriage with Diana couldn't withstand it. Michael's parents divorced when he was six years old, and he stayed with his mother. Seven years later, she remarried. Stepfather became the first adult Michael could talk to about anything, and thanks to whom the young man felt confident for the first time. But at school, none of the teachers could restrain his violent temperament. Even though Michael studied well, he skipped classes and talked back to the teachers. For some time, the young man worked at a mobile gas station. Some days, he was an employee of the month, and other days, he would track cars and steal spare parts from them with his friends. In addition to his stepfather, the authority for Douglas Jr. was his father, who managed to become a movie icon for the whole of America. Michael was so impressed by Kirk's films and the time spent with him on the set during the summer holidays that he also wanted to become an actor. He often asked his father which doors to knock on to break into Hollywood, but he was categorically against his son's choice of profession. However, when Michael enrolled at the University of California as a dramatic arts major and played in theatrical productions, Kirk came to his son's every performance, no matter how busy he was. At university, Douglas became friends with Danny DeVito, who later became his flatmate. They rented an apartment in New York for $150 a month. At the same time, the young man earned a living by delivering coffee at the cinema and working behind the scenes. Nevertheless, Kirk contributed to the beginning of his son's acting career. Together, they starred in and produced the 1966 film Cast a Giant Shadow. The following roles came only several years later. In the late 60s, early 70s, Douglas starred in several TV series and films such as Hail Hero and Summer Tree. On the set, the young man met a young promising actress, Brenda Vaccaro. The couple was inseparable for six years, living like hippies and vowing eternal love to each other. Michael calls this time the most wonderful in his life. But the relationship ended abruptly. Brenda just got in the car and left. The young actor's first significant work was the role of an inspector in the TV series The Streets of San Francisco, which he received in 1972 and played for five years. I've got two eyewitnesses. What did they see? Police brutality. Oh, come on now. Joe Landers? Look, he may be a little hard-nosed, but he never manhandled anybody. I don't buy that. All right, did they see the gun go off? Not who was holding it, no. His partner on the set was Kirk Douglas, friend Carl Malden. He called Michael the son he never had and insisted on his participation in the project. Interestingly, even after moving to Hollywood, Michael continued to pay his part of the rent while DeVito remained in New York. Also in 1972, our hero appeared in the films When Michael Calls and Napoleon and Samantha. The latter has become a classic of American children's films. Later, Douglas was caught up with the work behind the scenes. He directed one of the episodes of Streets of San Francisco and began working on the film adaptation of Ken Kesey's novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The rights to the film adaptation belonged to Kirk, but he abandoned the hope of implementing the project, so he handed them over to his son. The film surpassed all expectations, winning five Oscars and bringing fabulous profits to the Douglas dynasty. Since then, our hero has acted as a producer in many films in which he starred. In 1977, Michael married the daughter of an Australian diplomat, Deandra Luker, and a year later, they had a son, Cameron. According to both spouses, their life together was like a volcano. It subsided for a while, then erupted with terrible force. And there were a lot of infidelities. Deandra said in an interview that she once caught her husband with her friend, but each time she forgave him. 
1978, the thriller The China Syndrome was released. Douglas's payout, in which amounted to $262,000. For his next film, the sports drama Running, Michael trained a lot and ran about 55 miles a week. In addition, he stopped smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and lost almost 13 pounds. Then, the movie It's My Turn came out, but a successful career had to be put on pause for several years. In 1980, Douglas was seriously injured at a ski resort and returned to the screens only in 1983 with the crime thriller The Star Chamber. It then became widely known, unlike his next work, the adventure film Romancing the Stone. Michael, who also became the producer, bought the script for $250,000, and as a result, the box office around the world exceeded $85 million. Equally successful was the sequel titled The Jewel of the Nile in 1985, although Douglas took part in the sequel without much desire. Soon, the musical A Chorus Line was released on the screens, and in 1987, the world saw two hits at once, Fatal Attraction and Wall Street. For the former, Douglas received $13 million, and for the later, two major film awards, a Golden Globe and an Oscar. In addition, the role of the stock market shark and concurrently the main villain ironically inspired many people to make a career in economics and the stock market. In 1989, Michael presented to the audience the crime thriller Black Rain and the comedy The War of the Roses. In the latter, he worked with his friend Danny DeVito. Then, he produced several films, including the action movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Double Impact, and starred in the military drama Shining Through. But the absolute hit of 1992 was the thriller Basic Instinct, for which Douglas received $15 million. My sex life's actually pretty shitty since I stopped seeing you. Start developing calluses. According to Michael, shooting the sex scene with Sharon Stone was torture because they had to repeat the choreography for 10 hours of the shooting day for five days in a row. In addition, the actor forbade shooting himself naked from the front. By the way, he performed almost all the car stunts on his own. The role of the detective from Basic Instinct became one of the brightest in Douglas's career. But he didn't get stuck in one role. In the next movie, Falling Down, he appeared in the image of an average guy who cannot stand the injustice of the world. To participate in the project, Michael canceled a family vacation and later called this role his favorite. Then, the actor added several roles to his filmography in the film's Disclosure with a payout of $12 million and American President. While working on the latter, Douglas discovered a distant relationship to U.S. President Richard Nixon and both Bush and the payout amounted to $15 million. His intuition for hits didn't let the actor and producer down. Each of his next projects was a great success. For example, the adventure film The Ghost and the Darkness and the thrillers A Perfect Murder and The Game, for each of which Michael received $20 million. Oh no, you've got to be kidding. What is happening? This is what I was trying to explain to you. This is a, uh, a game. Meanwhile, big changes were taking place in his personal life. Since the mid-90s, their marriage with Deandra was a conformity and they just couldn't agree on the terms of the divorce. Even the marriage contract didn't make the task easier because Deandra wanted to increase the amount of compensation and Michael wanted to reduce it. At the same time, he was invested in a new relationship. In 1998, at the screening of The Mask of Zorro, he saw Catherine Zeta-Jones and was so fascinated by her that he immediately declared his desire to become the father of her children. Later, the actress would admit that she immediately fell in love with him but didn't want to have an affair with the taken man. However, six months after they met, they would spend hours on the phone talking about everything in the world. After that, the relationship developed rapidly. On New Year's Eve of 1999, Catherine was already pregnant and Michael offered his beloved a long-prepared ring with a 10-carat diamond surrounded by 28 smaller stones. Its cost is estimated from one to two million dollars. The actor's first wife then, without sarcasm, told reporters that he would have to change his religion to one where polygamy is allowed. But Douglas was already ready to agree to all DeAndre's conditions. So in 2000, he paid her $45 million and left her a mansion in Beverly Hills, as well as half of the estate in Majorca. By the way, Michael tried several times to find a buyer for his luxury property, but since the ex-wife remained the co-owner, he took it off the market. 
In August of the same year, Catherine gave birth to their first child, Dylan Michael, and in November, they had a gorgeous wedding of the year, which cost the actor two million. However, one million was covered because the magazine OK paid for an exclusive photo from the magnificent celebration. Interestingly, Michael and Catherine were born on the same day with a difference of 25 years. Personal affairs didn't prevent Douglas from actively acting and producing. So, in the same year 2000, he presented the movie Wonder Boys and together with his young wife appeared in the thriller Traffic. These two projects brought our hero 15 million. This was followed by the films One Night at Nicole's, Don't Say a Word, The In-Laws, and It Runs in the Family. The latter involved representatives of three generations of the Douglas family, Kirk and Diana, their son Michael and grandson Cameron. In 2003, the family of Michael and Catherine welcomed their daughter, Caracetta. After her birth, the celebrities moved to Bermuda, where our hero's mother is from. For more than 10 years, the couple lived in a quiet life, leaving only for filming, and the children didn't even know what their parents were doing. Their daughter recalled that as a child, she was sure that the main occupation of her dad's life was to bake pancakes for breakfast and please mom. The couple still owns this cozy nest, although they tried to sell it in 2019 for 10.6 million but changed their minds. After a short break in his creative activity, Douglas returned to the screens in 2006 with the films The Sentinel, You, Me and Dupree, and a year later presented the comedy drama King of California. Then came the movies Ghosts of Girlfriends Past, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt, Solitary Man, and the continuation of the 1987 drama Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. You're the ninja generation. No income, no job, no assets. You got a lot to look forward to. <laughs> a busy period in his career again coincided with the vessitudes of private life. His eldest son Cameron was a drug addict, and our hero had to forbid him to approach his family. In 2009, Cameron was accused of smuggling, which led him behind bars. By the way, Michael himself also suffered from addiction and in the 90s received treatment in a rehab clinic. His son also managed to get over a dangerous addiction, and Catherine Zeta-Jones at that difficult time became a real support for the family. But soon, another misfortune struck them. In 2010, Michael was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer. Catherine did everything to help her husband heal, but soon she couldn't stand the stress, and she started showing signs of bipolar disorder. Their periods of incredible activity were replaced by the deepest depression, and Michael didn't take his wife's problems seriously at all. These events almost put an end to their union, and they seriously talked about divorce, but still managed to make up. In 2012 to 2014, such films as Haywire and So It Goes, Beyond the Reach, and the biographical drama Behind the Candelabra were released. In the latter, the actor played the legend of American show business pianist and entertainer Liberace. And this role became a real gift for him after his illness. He trained for a long time, recreating the voice of his character and studied his piano playing technique. Also during this period, the actor starred in the comedy drama Last Vegas, along with Robert De Niro and Morgan Freeman. It's just winding up a little too fast, and I'm feeling old and alone. In 2015, Michael joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe playing the role of Hank Pym in the movie Ant-Man. He appeared in the same image in other projects, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Endgame, and the animated series What If. In addition, during the period, the actor starred in the action movie Unlocked, the thriller Animal World, took part in the voiceover of the children's series Green Eggs and Ham, and presented the series The Kominsky Method. For this comedic role, which is rare for him, Douglas received another Golden Globe. Why? It is fine. Which is what I said. No, no, you said it with an attitude, and you said, fine. Forgive me. Fine. Jesus, let's just order. Fine. In addition, our hero worked as a producer on the prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The series rashed about a psychiatric hospital nurse. At the end of 2018, Michael Douglas's star was unveiled on the Hollywood Walk, dedicated to the 50th anniversary of his career. The actor admits that only work helps him keep in shape and to be fit, and he has a lot of projects. In February 2023, the premiere of the fantastic action movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania took place, where Douglas again played Hank Pym. 
The filming of the series, Franklin About American President Benjamin Franklin, has already begun, and work is underway on a historical series about the relationship between two other presidents, Reagan and Gorbachev. Neither age nor illness affected Douglas's intelligence, and he was still surprising others with his ability to instantly remember the names of people he sees for the first time, and to notice the slightest nuances that distinguish the manner of the interlocutor's behavior. He loves golf and Formula One, and also does a lot of charity work. As the UN peace envoy, he is on a mission to draw the world's attention to nuclear disarmament and the protection of human rights. Philanthropy Douglas's family affair through the registered fund, they send money to various organizations. The entire inheritance from Kirk Douglas of $61 million was also sent to a charity, especially since Michael's fortune greatly exceeds his father's capital. It is estimated at $350 million earned as an actor and producer. In addition, Douglas invests. However, after the 2008 crisis, when he lost about 35-40% to 40 of his fortune, Michael became more conservative in investments. Douglas owns a valuable real estate portfolio with assets all over the world, which he gradually sells for his own benefit. He owned a plot of land with an area of more than 12 acres in Westchester County, New York, which he bought in 2015 for $11.3 million and sold in 2019 for $20.5 million. Around the same time, he and Catherine paid only $4.5 million for a house in the wealthy suburb of Irvington in New York State. The three-story Georgian mansion has eight bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, several living rooms and dining rooms, an indoor swimming pool, and a picturesque view of the Hudson River. Douglas and his wife also own a large apartment in New York City overlooking Central Park. The 15-room penthouse includes a master bedroom and a cozy library. In 2021, the property was put up for sale, but apparently hasn't found its buyer yet. The actor can rarely be seen in commercial advertising. The exception is the German electronic stock trading company Comdirect. But the most interesting one is the 60-second video for the FBI, in which Michael appeared as his character from Wall Street. It is known that Douglas owns cars of different brands and times, from vintage to modern, in particular the Mercedes-Benz Army type car and the Toyota Prius. Now, the Douglas acting dynasty is continued by Michael's eldest son, Cameron. But so far, his films haven't enjoyed great success. And which movie with this actor do you like the most? Okay. 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 If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.